Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Sew Together Tuesday. I'm Teresa Coates. I'm the National Educator for Shannon Fabrics. And we're here today doing something a little bit different. If you joined us for the past few weeks, every week we've been doing a different project. And today we're not going to work on a project per se. We're going to work on a technique. So I'm going to show you how to use cuddle for binding, whether it's on a simple back-to-back -back blanket with two pieces of cuddle um, that we bind, or if you're using a kit. So a lot of times when people get the kits, um, that's the part that they really struggle with is that um, the binding part because it's got some similarities to quilting uh, to regular cotton quilting uh, but it is also different so we're going to talk about the differences between them and I'm going to talk about how to do it with a different kind of fabric okay so we are going to talk about binding it with the Lux cuddle which is what this is this is our moonwalk quilt um, which comes with the the binding all of our ki kits do so they all come with binding. This is um, just a pattern that we have that's the elephant walk that is using cuddle three as the binding. And then this is a little sample that I made that uses the silver hide. And that's what we'll do today is the silver hide uh, because that's the one that comes with most of our kits, okay? Maybe not most, but a lot of the kits. And it's this sort of fluff that you're gonna be dealing with. Um, but you're also able to do it with the cuddle three. And I'll show you some techniques for both and how they work. And I'm gonna do it with both of my machines. So I have a, a baby lock crescendo that I'm gonna be doing Doing it on and then I also have a Bernina that I'll be working on so you can see it with the um, with like what would be a normal walking foot and then also with the digital um, dual feed on the baby lock so we'll do it with both of them um, I've recorded some before I'm going to show you those and then we can talk through it and I'll show you um, all the things that you need uh, we're going to deal with just a few tools today really it's pins wonder clips and a stiletto and I'll show you that when we get to the videos all right, so I've got a ruler here that I'm going to um, use to cut out a couple of squares out of Cuddle 3. So what I've got here are two fabrics on top of each other, and I'm just gonna use the rotary cutter and my ruler to cut out two matching squares. If I were doing a larger square than this 10 and a half inch square, I would draw the lines out on the back, but because this is such a small square and I have a ruler that'll work around the whole thing, I'm just gonna use it. Okay, and then I'll be able to get two matching squares. And then I've got my wonder clips and my long flower head pins. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shake this stuff off in my studio. Normally I would take it outside and give it a good shake, but I don't wanna leave you here. Um, if I had a dryer, I would just throw it into the dryer with a wet washcloth, let it tumble around for a couple minutes and knock all that dust off. I don't have one here, plus we're doing this right here right now. Okay, so I'm just gonna give this a good shake get most of my cuddle dust off of it, okay? And then the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these together and I'm just gonna use a little bit of 505 spray and I'm gonna spray them together. Okay, so now I have my two pieces of fabric and I'm just gonna check which way the nap goes. Okay, and the nap is going the same way on both of those. So I'm just gonna flip them over Move this out of the way. And I've put some um, scrap paper down here that I'm gonna use to make sure I don't get any of the 505 spray on my board. Okay, so I'm gonna flip this over and lay this down. Okay, now I'm just gonna spray just a little bit here. Okay, and then lay this guy on there. The nice thing about the 505 spray is that it's tacky but not super sticky so if I need to move it like this I can just kind of lift it up and move it which I'm going to do and try to get this as perfect as possible if it's off a little bit it's fine um, then I'm just going to pat it down um, the seam allowances are one half inch so if it's a little bit off it's no big deal okay so now I've got my piece all ready to go because I've um, sprayed these together, basted them together with the spray, they're just gonna work as one piece now. When I wash it, this will come loose. So if you want to tack that down with some stitching, you can. You could also add batting in there and then quilt it if you want. But this way I found is the easiest way to make a really simple little blanket with the, with the um, binding on it, okay? So I have two um, fabrics that I'm gonna use today. So I have the Cuddle 3 that I'm gonna use, and then I have the Hide. 
Okay, so we're gonna do binding with both of these and I'm actually just gonna do two sides with the cuddle three and then two sides with the hide so you can see how that works, okay, for both of those. Um, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna make a longer strip. When you do the kits, you're always gonna have to sew together at least two or three strips, so we're gonna cut these out first. This one, you can see I cut out with the Ulfa blade so that it has a nicer, um, sharp edge to it here, but has the fluff still falling off the edge, okay? You can cut this with a rotary. What you'll end up is just cutting all of these little pieces, okay? And so then I've got those two pieces and I need to stick them together. So I'm going to do that. Um, and then here's my little Ulfa blade. I just wanna make sure that you knew what I was talking about. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick these two ends together. So I'm gonna show you with the Cuddle 3 how I do this. So I'm gonna pet the fabric and figure out which way it goes. My nap is running that direction. I know that because if I push it this way, it does weird things. Okay, so this one, I'm gonna test this one. See which way, this is the way the nap goes on this one. So I need to make sure and have this end over here. Okay, so then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip it over so that they are right sides together. Okay, so right sides together. And then I overlap it a little bit so that I can see either side of that. And then I'm gonna draw a line. You can eyeball it if you're good at that, um, or you can draw a line. I just use my ruler and I'm gonna look and I'm gonna catch that corner to that corner. And I'm just gonna draw a little line with my ballpoint pen. Okay, and I can follow that line now. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pin it on either side so that it's not gonna move while I'm sewing it. And I can leave those pins in there because they're far enough away from the stitching line that I can stitch this and my needle can't possibly hit it. So I'm gonna take that out of the machine and sew that real quick. All right, so I am on the Baby Lock Crescendo today. Um, I'm gonna use both of them, like I said, um, but this is what I'm gonna sew this on. So I've got this, I'm gonna put this in my machine. I've got a 9014 stretch needle in there and my polyester thread. And I'm gonna up my stitch length to a 3.5, okay? And I'm gonna sew this just right along that line. I'm gonna back stitch. So I want this to be nice and strong right there. Stitch all the way across. I can just leave my pins in because I'm not gonna stitch on them because where I place them, I'm gonna take that out. Okay, now I can check it, make sure that it worked, it sure did. So we'll take it back over and trim it up. Okay, so now we've got that sewn. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna trim this off. So I need to trim off my seam allowance there. Um, and I just, whack it off is all I do. Um, it should be about a half an inch, okay? I don't measure it and it doesn't really matter, but I do know that you don't want it to be tiny because if you do, what'll happen because it's a knit is that this will roll. So we wanna keep it large enough that it'll lay out flat. And then when we put this in, we're gonna lay this out, okay? And have that sit in there just like that. Totally works. You can see this got off just the tiniest little bit and it doesn't matter because it's not going to show at all, okay? All right. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this little piece, okay, and I'm gonna start. I always do it on the back and then go to the front. So this is gonna be my front, this is gonna be my back. You can do it from the uh, front to the back, but this is just how I like to do it. Um, and mostly I do it that way so that my, when I do the top stitching, which you'll see, um, that goes on the front. Okay, so because this is a tiny little piece, I'm actually gonna start way over here at the corner. We're gonna do a corner really quickly. Um, so what I do is I try to get a tail that's about 10 inches. So I'm gonna stick a pin in here. It's gonna be a little bit shorter on this one and that's fine, but aim on yours to do it at about 10 inches. So I stick pins in here and then I'm gonna use Wonder Clips, okay? So normally I would have a little bit more space, so I'm just gonna pretend, we'll pretend that this pin is over here and this is about how far I do them apart. Okay, then I would put a wonder clip and then I would put a pin. All right, but I wanna start sewing about here, so that's what that, that pin is to remind me of. And then what we wanna do is about a half an inch from the end, and these boards are kinda nice that have this. This is one of the Olfa boards. Um, they're new pretty blue ones. Um, but these are half inch marks, and so I could just use the board real quick and get it about a half an inch, and um, that works perfectly fine, okay? So then I'm gonna take this over to the machine and I'm gonna sew this part and show you the corner. All right. 
All right, so I've got this. I'm going to bring this to the machine and I'm going to stick it underneath the foot. Um, I want to start about where that pin is. All right, so I'm going to stick my foot down here. I'm going to take my wonder clip out and my pin out. Okay, before I start sewing, I want to just put the put the foot down. If you want to put your needle down and then take your pin out, you totally can. And I'm just going to stitch a little bit here. Back stitch. So we're going to want some strength there. Okay, and then I'm going to stitch forward half inch seam allowance to the point that I get to my pin. Okay, and I can see it needs one more. Yeah, there we go. All right, I'm going to take my pin out, lift my foot, and turn this. Okay, you can see I have a little line on here, and most machines will have something here. If they don't, you could put a little piece of tape or a little mark. Um, basically, what we're doing is we're just going to sew right off the end here at a 45 degree angle. Okay, I'm going to put my thread and take this out. Okay. Then we're going to bring it back over here. And then what we do for these corners is, and this you can do this on um, your regular quilting cotton, or yeah, quilting cotton quilts too. Um, but you're just going to do this little, go up at the corner, and then you bring this up, nice and straight. And then I hold a finger down here and flip it back. Okay. Then what we want to do is we want to make sure that these two edges match right here. Okay. And so I'm going to pin those in place. So it doesn't move. And then I'm going to put some clips in here along the side. What I want to make sure is that this fold here, that I can still see the raw edges behind it. Um, because if this fold gets too far up and it goes past the raw edge, what will happen is that you will end up with like a little pocket up there when you turn this the other way. So we want to keep it nice and tight. So I'm just going to add a couple of pins here. I'm in a couple of clips, sorry, these are little wonder clips. Okay, and then I'm going to add another pin down at the corner. So if you struggle a little bit and the clips are not holding it well enough, throw some pins in there, because sometimes I'll do that, and especially on the fluffier stuff, I will do that. I'll throw a pin in here and then in here, and that'll keep it in check a little bit better. With the Cuddle 3, I don't have much trouble with it moving, so I tend not to use pins with that. And then I'm going to go up here and I'm going to find that half inch from the end, and I'm going to stick a pin in there. I'm going to go back and sew this whole side again. Okay, so we're going to stick this underneath the foot. I'm going to leave that pin in there because I want it to stay where I need it to be, and it's not going to get in the way of my. Um, it's not going to get in the way of my sewing. So I'm going to sew just a couple of little stitches. I'm st starting in just the tiniest little bit, maybe less than a quarter of an inch, and I'm just going to start there, right along this edge. Okay. And then I'm going to keep an eye on this and make sure that those are those two are lining up and going under the foot pretty evenly. Okay, we want to keep it at a half an inch or just a scant half. Um, so a little less is better than a little more. Okay, we'll just stitch right along this side, and I'll take the wonder clips out as I get to them. Okay, the same thing if you're using the pins. And we're going to get to the corner here, and I'm going to stop again when I'm close to the pin so that I don't ride right over it. Okay. I'm going to lift this, turn it, aim for that corner again. Clip my thread. Okay. Now, I'm going to take it back over. Okay. So now I've got it here, and I'm going to do this one more time. I'm going to go up, and then hold it and bring it back down, and then pin that in place right at the corner, right away, so it doesn't slip and move again. Okay, and then I'm going to cut this off because I'm going to add a piece of my hide to it. So normally we wouldn't bind, uh, we wouldn't bind it with both fabrics, but that's totally what I'm going to do this time. And I'm actually going to sew to here, and then I'm just going to let it be a tail, and I'm going to start sewing on the um, the hide, okay? And then I'll show you how to how to do those ends. Okay, so I'm going to sew this and then we'll come back and combine it.
Okay, so once more, I'm just gonna shove this in just a little bit, so I'm not starting before the fabric. Um, it'll wanna suck your fabric in if you do that, and that's not any fun. So um, get, it, get it on the fabric first and then start sewing. Okay, and I generally don't backstitch there because that seam isn't gonna get any stress and it's hidden underneath another one. Okay, so I'm gonna get to here on a backstitch. I'm gonna take this out and go get the silver hide and do the same thing with that. Okay, so now we've got, we've got three, or three sides partly done, and I've got two corners done. I'm gonna take these pins out because they don't need to be there anymore, okay? And I'm gonna take this one out and I'm just gonna put a pin here because when I come back around to here, I wanna make sure that I stop, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my, this is the hide one, okay? This one, it has a nap, but it doesn't really matter so much, so I'm just not gonna, not gonna pay attention to it. And I'm going to get this pinned on. Okay, so I'm gonna pin it on so it has a nice long tail, just like we did on the other. Okay, I'm gonna start pinning here. With the longer ones, I tend to pin more than I clip. Um, and that's really just because it's thicker and I have, um, it's not as easy to control, okay? So I've used my, used my board, stuck a pin in at about a half an inch one more time, and then I'm gonna go sew this. Okay, so keep that out of the way. Get this up under there and start about where that pin is. Okay, so this stuff you'll notice is much fluffier. So on most machines, they have like an extra lift that you can use to get your foot up a little bit higher. And I'd suggest that you use that. Okay, and then we'll put our foot down, take the pin out, do a little back stitch here. And then we'll sew down to that pin and sew off the corner again. Okay. And you can see it's definitely um, a little harder to see with all the fluff. Okay, so that may seem like it's more difficult, but I'll show you how it's actually easier. All right, so then we take this back over here and I'm gonna do the exact same thing that I did with the other. And then I'm gonna pull this up, straight up the side, put my finger on it and pull it down. Okay, I'm gonna stick a couple pins in and keep it there. Okay, so same rule with keeping that fold just below the edge. And then I'm going to lose my pin and find another one. Okay, so I'm gonna stick this here and then I'm gonna grab a couple of clips and put this along the side. And then I'm put another pin in where my half inch ends, okay? So at about here, I'm gonna pull this down and I kind of pull it a little bit, um, just the tiniest little tug. I don't pull it, you really, cause you can see if I pull this, it has quite a bit of stretch in it. I really don't want that to happen. I don't wanna pull it as I'm going because what will happen is it'll tend to bowl the quilt, which isn't what you want. You wanna keep it nice and flat. Um, I just make sure that it's as flat as possible and not kind of lifting up in between, okay? All right, so let's sew this. So I'm gonna do that same thing and lift up my foot a little bit. You'll notice I have my stiletto now and that's because whenever I'm working with the Lux Cuddles, I love my little stiletto. Okay, I'm gonna start again up here. Okay, this lets me stab it and push it underneath the foot. Not really push it, but keep it down as it goes under the foot so that it tends not to gather up in front. It gives me a little bit more control without sticking my finger close to that needle which I've heard enough horror stories about that I'm keeping my finger away. Okay, and I just keep an eye on this, make sure that this edge is coming near um, these so that they're kind of matching up. I wanna make sure that those are pretty darn close. Okay, take my little clips out as I go and then keep this nice and straight. So you just kind of keep an eye on things. You're gonna sew this nice and slow. This isn't a race at all. Okay, and I want you to remember that as you're sewing. It's not any sort of a competition to see who can finish it fastest. Okay, I'm gonna take that out. One more little stitch. Lift up my foot, turn, sew right off the corner again. Okay. 
All right. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the same thing one more time. And then we'll have our two ends and I'm gonna show you how we can combine those, okay? Um, I'm gonna do it a little bit funky because we have them landing at different points. So um, it'll, be, it'll be different, but we're gonna, we're gonna work through it, okay? So we're gonna pull this up, back down. I'm gonna take this pin and I'm gonna stab it here. And I'm gonna take another pin and stab it up here. Okay, all right, and then I'm gonna go sew just this little bit. stitch and then we'll take it out okay all right okay so this part would work the same on either um, a Bernina or a Faf or a Janome whatever you have that has a regular walking foot it will totally work the same way you're just gonna do the half inch seam allowance all the way around and then you have these little corners okay when I do the top stitching we're gonna switch between machines and I'll show you the recorded stuff um, just so that you can see how it works differently on both machines okay so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this um, so that it is just a tail Okay, looks like I need to snap that blade off of there. It's not quite as sharp as I want it to be. All right, so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna, um, we have a couple of ways of doing it. So I'm gonna show you one way and then I'm gonna show you a different way, okay? So these, I don't even know that I told you this, we cut these strips at one and three quarter inches. So sorry, um, that's important. One and three quarter inches for these strips. So it's a little bit different than most. Um, so then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna fold one up and I'm gonna fold one down. Okay, normally these would be the same fabrics, okay? So normally it would look like one going up and then one going down like this, okay? So that's normally what it would look like. I'm gonna sew them together differently because we do with two different fabrics on here, okay? But that's, it's gonna work the exact same way. So I fold one up, fold one down, Okay, and then what I do is I leave a little bit of a gap in there. So I don't bump these right up to each other because if I push them down, they're pretty darn close to each other now. And there's enough fluff and enough stretch in there that they will fit together, okay? So I just wanna get these so that they go straight up and straight down um, so that the 45 is right, okay? So then what I do is I hold these with my fingers and then I shove this in one fold and then I just sort of feel around till I find the other fold and I shove it in and then back around. Okay, so now this is basically where my seam allowance should be to make this lay flat. You can see it fits in there, right? But this isn't actually very well done on a 45. So I'm gonna lay this to the side and then I'm gonna sort of hold it, repin it, okay? Sometimes it's easier to leave this pin in here and redo it. So let me show you, fit, yep, okay, great. Then I'm gonna pin this on either side of that pin, okay? So what I'm trying to do is give myself a place where I can sew, that I know that this is my seam line, and I'm gonna sew in between there. Actually, I can take that pin out, get that nice and flat in there. And a lot of this is by feel, which I know you can't see. So I could feel there was a little hump in there, so I had to pull it out and get it nice and flat. Then we're getting this one to a 45, or to a 90 degree angle so that I can sew the 45 here. Okay, so I'm gonna go sew this here, um, and then we'll see how it lays flat. Okay, so you can stick this in either way that you want to with the heads up, the heads down. Um, just make sure that you're not gonna hit the heads as you're sewing, okay? So then I'm gonna stitch here. I'm gonna stitch right between there and aim for the other side. Okay, this is one of those places where if you need to mark it with the pen, you totally can. Come on, back stitch. Okay. okay and then we'll take this out. 
All right, so I've gotten it sewn across there and I'm gonna take my pins out and see how it worked. So I don't ever trim that until I double check it and make sure that it worked. And you can see that that fits in there just fine. So then I'm gonna trim this. Okay. And then I'm gonna trim the other side. All right. So now we'll get that mess out of the way. All right, and now I could lay this down and then I'll just finish that up and I'll just stitch it down the rest of the way. Okay, so let me do the other side and show you the other way of doing it. All right, so let's see. So I gotta get this switched around here. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay this under here and I'm gonna lay this on top of it and I'm gonna use a piece of the fabric like I have before, like the, it's the width that this is cut. Okay, I like to use the Cuddle 3 for this one because it's flatter um, and you can uh, see, see the width a little bit better. Whoops. Okay, we wanna get those laid down there nice and flat. Put a pin in here. I'm gonna put a pin in over here. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do, whoops. Let's take the pin out of the bottom layer. I'm going to stick these together like this, okay? And then I always want to make sure that I'm getting it right because this is a method that I mess up more often. So I usually do the other way, okay? So then I would say, okay, does that work? Oh, it does. Good, good. Okay, so then I'm going to move it to the side like I did before, try to get this to lay flat, and then put my pins in there on either side of where that stitching line is gonna be, okay? And again, like I said, if you need to um, draw your stitching line, you totally can, all right? So let's take this back to the machine and sew it. All right, so for me, this is the hardest part of the binding is really is trying to get all of this in the machine and keep this nice and flat. So sometimes that can be a little bit of a struggle, so just take your time with doing it. Okay, and then we're just gonna aim for the other side. I'm gonna back stitch a little bit. Okay, and then I'm just gonna shoot for the other side there. Back stitch, clip my threads. Okay. All right, and then I will check this again make sure that it works before I cut anything off. Okay, seems to work just fine. So then I can cut my fabrics again. All right. So now we can lay that nice and flat too. Okay. And then I push that out. Um, this part here, we can just come back with the scissors and just trim that up. That's no big deal. Okay, so I'm pin and pin. So now when I do this part, a lot of times I will take it, and this is what I'm going to do today, is I'm going to sew it from this side, all right, because I can follow this line and aim from here to here. And that way, if this is a little bit loose or anything, it's just going to feed it right in. Okay, let's stick this in the machine again. I'm going to get that nice and flat there, get my seam to open up, and I'm going to put this under there and match up my seam where I was before. Okay, and then I'm just going to start sewing, and I'm going to back stitch here just to tack it, and then I'm going to stitch and aim for this line right here, okay? I'm going to overlap it just a few stitches, back stitch and cut my threads. Okay, and then I'm just gonna come around and I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Um, I'm gonna do it from this side just so you can see how it looks from this side too. It's totally doable, but what I have found is that the top side, um, that this side tends to um, be a little loose more often than not. And so if I do it from the other side, it always catches it in and this side it could start to stretch a little bit. Maybe that makes sense. Okay. So I'm gonna sew again here. I'm gonna do the same thing, just overlap my stitches a little bit. Okay, and I'm gonna keep this down as I sew it. Take my pins out. 
come right along here and help feed that underneath there. And you can see how that stiletto really helps a lot. Okay. All right. All right, and so you can see there was a tiniest little pucker that happened right there. I don't know if you can see that. It's super tiny and won't make any difference. But if this does happen and it's a bigger pucker, you'll totally notice it on the cuddle fabric. Um, with the Lux cuddle fabric, if any sort of pucker happens, you can't see it on the other side at all. That's one of the things that I like about it. Okay, so now we're going to do the top stitching on it. So we've gotten it sewn all the way around. This looks kind of funky because it's got the two bindings, but I hope you understand <laughs> what was happening there. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, sew part of it, like I said, on the Bernina and then part of it on the Baby Lock, okay? Um, and I did another one earlier, but I might just, I might just try to do this again. Um, okay, so then what I'm going to do sorry, um, is I'm going to wonder clip this. So what we're doing is we're pulling this over around and just past the stitch line. So this line is what I'm aiming for to go just past it because I want to cover that when it comes around. I want to not see that stitching line after this is all stitched down. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to stitch along here. Um, so what I'll do is I'll start in here and we'll stitch all the way around um, and then I'll show you what it's like on the Bernina. Okay, so when I'm doing it with the Lux Cuddle, and I'm just going to start in the middle here so that we have um, equal space on both machines, um, I set this to a zigzag and I do the largest zigzag um, that most machines can do, which is a five wide and a five long. Okay, I'm going to lift this up stick this underneath there. Now this is where it becomes a little bit of a guessing game because I can't really see my edge there and so I just find it. I can see it's right there. Okay and I'm going to get that underneath there so that it basically is coming down on this side of the hole so that my zigzag will come when it comes down over here it'll come just right off that edge. Okay. So like I said, this is basically a guessing game um, in how this works. I can move this over and I check it, but I don't, keep, um, I don't keep it over all the time. I just keep a glance at it so that I can see it. And I'll do some stitches and I'll keep going. And then basically I use my stiletto to hold it in place because I've gotten it, I've gotten it wonder clipped down to where I want it to be. So I can just sort of clip it and go. All right, and then once I get to here, once I get up to this corner, then we're gonna have to redo it. So I can see my stitching line there. Okay, then once I get up here, this needs to fold before I get to the corner. So I use my little stiletto, I fold this over, so it's basically a miter, okay? And I'm gonna pin it, okay? You can totally take this out and repin it if you want to, um, but you don't have to. Okay, so I'm going to clip that so that when I come around this corner and I take the pin out, there's something else holding it in place. Okay, so I'm just shoving all of this nap down and keeping an eye on where my pin is. I'm going to do one more stitch. I'm going to take my pin out and then I'm just going to pivot. Okay, then I'm going to check my edge. See that it's lining up with my, um, my stitch line from before. And I'm going to keep going. Okay, so now I need to repin this and I need to trim that off. So let me do that really quick because we don't want to catch that in there. We want that to be gone. Okay, so I'm going to reclip this, just pulling it over just past that stitching line and clipping it on. All right, and then I'm going to do the same thing. Hold this down, make sure that it's going in the right place. Check for my edge a little bit. Take the clip out, double check. Go for it. Okay, so this one I've been doing a zigzag, and I'm going to do a zigzag continuing to the corner so you can see what it looks like on the cuddle three. You can see, like now I can suddenly see where my edge is. And if it's off, I'm going to notice it and it's going to drive me crazy. Um, so just try to keep this tack down as much as possible. I'm going to move this so I can stab it and hold it in place. OK. 
Okay, and then once I get here, I'm going to do that same thing where I'm going to fold this up. Okay, and then I'm going to pin it. So that it'll stay where I want it to be. Like I said, you are more than welcome to stop, take it out, repin it, um, and then keep on going. Okay, so we're going to get this up to here. Do one more. Okay, and then I'm going to take my pin out. I'm going to kind of hold it in place and I'm going to pivot. Okay, and then I can keep sewing. Okay, and so once I got that in, back into place, then I can take this clip out, move it down a little bit, and then I can hold this edge right in place and stitch it. Okay, with the zigzag, you can see that you can see all these little zigzag stitches in there. Um, the thing that I have found is that if these uh, stitches aren't really neat, if my machine doesn't want to feed it through very evenly, I can see all of this. So, um, so I tend not to use a zigzag for it. I'm going to show you how you can do a serpentine. Um, so let me find it here on my machine. So I'm going to do the serpentine and I'm going to open it up. so that it's longer and wider. Okay. So mine, I've got it set at 1.6 millimeters long and five millimeters wide. Okay, and I'm going to move my little wonder clip down. Oops. Oh, little guy. Okay, and I'm going to hold this in place some more. And I'm just going to keep checking because with the cuddle, you're going to be able to see if that's um, not matching up on the edge really easily and if it's not flat. So I have to try to keep it as flat as possible. Okay, I'm going to shove that down and keep on going. Okay, so the way that you do the serpentine is really up to you. You may want to do it wider or narrower, whichever one you prefer, that's up to you. Um, the same with the zigzag. I do um, the zigzag the way that I do because it's the easiest <laughs> um, and not because it's necessarily the prettiest. Um, a lot of people really prefer the serpentine and um, I only use it on the cuddle, not the Lux cuddles. Okay. So I'm going to get that pin in there so that I can do this around the corner. Okay, and then I'm going to pivot. All right. All right. So I'm going to hold that in place, put my foot back down. moving. Um, so the stiletto I found is really helpful for little things like that where it sort of gets stuck every once in a while because it's so thick. Um, you kind of got to give it a little a little nudge. Um, the stiletto works really well for that. Okay and I can see I can see my edge there a little bit. Um, I'm just going to try to keep this as neat as possible. Um, so this, this um, edge so the binding, we do it on the quilts. We also, I'll show you a little hooded towel that we have and um, a couple other little things too that you can use this on. Okay, so we're almost to the end of this part. And then I'm gonna show you what the stiletto is like on the Lux. Okay. And then we'll do a little bit on the other machine just so you can see it. So you can see in the, the Lux, you're really just, you know, completely sewing blindly. Um, <laughs> all right, I'm going to turn this. I'm going to hope for the best. And we're just going to go right down this side and try to aim for the edge there. So I can look up and I can see, okay, there's the cut edge. That's what I want to catch. And I can just go. Um, the thing that I like about the Lux Cuddle is that I can s stitch it more imperfectly um, 
imperfectly and it will not you won't see any of these stitches so you can you might be able to see in here these little stitch 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 um, once it like you fluff it up like this all of that will be gone okay and it's the same thing with the zigzag which is over here and you can see that the thread all gets caught up in there too and then once I do a little fluffy with the stiletto it brings all those stitches right back out and you can't see any of it um, which is really lovely um, so that's why I like this the cuddle I have um, honestly I have a harder time getting it nice and straight um, so this is with the zigzag and this is with the um, why that just the word is gone right now um, the serpentine um, so this is with the serpentine and how it looks um, and so both of those are really easy. This one you'll just see your stitches, and this one you can hide all of your stitches. Okay, so that's the big difference. So let me show you how I do this on the Bernina. Okay, all right, so let me show you this one that I had. This is one that I had prepped earlier, and um, we're just gonna do it now. Um, let's do it live, why not? Um, okay, so I've got this corner is messed up right now. Um, so I'm going to stick this under my machine, use my little extra lift, and I'm going to put this in there. So I'm going to use um, the serpentine on here, which is stitch four, and I'm going to do the same thing and get this at 1.4 and then at five wide. So it'll be the same as I was using on the baby lock, okay? Um, so you can see how that one works. So I can see where my needle is going to come down, and so I want my edge to hit right there okay and so this is where it becomes really uh, important to keep an eye on it when you're working with the cuddle three it's much more important to um, really be very careful with it because you'll see all the stitches and it's harder to keep it um, really straight um, and I'll show you the zigzag on it as well okay So with this one, it's kind of nice because you can see um, where your fabric is coming in better than on the other one because that one has a closed toe front. Um, this one has the open toe, so you can see it a little bit better. Um, and I just have to carefully maneuver this over here so it stays along that stitching line. Okay, so you can see the stitching line is here. I'm just gonna, I just grab it with my stiletto, drag it over. Okay, and I'm just gonna do this all the way around. Um, I'm sure that once you get some practice, <laughs> you'll be faster than I am. I'm not super fast at this one because I like to use the Lux Cuddle. Um, but you can see that it just runs right along the side of the foot. Super duper easy in that regard, okay? Because you can see where it's going really nicely, which is the great thing about these, the regular walking feet here. Okay, so you can see that really nicely. So, let's see if we can see that. Um, so you can see that nice little serpentine that's happening there. It's really pretty. So we're going to go down a little bit further, and then I'm going to switch it to a zigzag just so you can see how that works. Okay, I don't have the Lux Cuddle on here, unfortunately, but really, you saw how the Lux Cuddle works. Um, it's really pretty darn easy. Okay, so we've got some of the um, serpentine here, and now I'm going to switch this back to a zigzag, which is just the two-stitch, and I'm going to do the same thing as I did over there where it's five wide, five long. And that way we can sort of compare how they are. All right. So I'm going to hold this. Okay. And I can see that this is coming down just on that side of the... So when the needle comes down, it comes down right over here just off the edge of it. And that's really what we want, um, is it to come down just off the edge. And what that does is holds it down nice and flat. Okay. I'll hold this over here. And you can see that just coming down right off the edge. And what that's going to do is hold it super duper well and also make it so that it's a smooth um, jump over there, basically. Okay, I need to clip that. Okay, so once we get to the corner, we would just do the same thing and do the little pivot. So I'm just going to go down a little bit further. It's going to work exactly the same the rest of the way. I just want to see the difference and show you guys. All right, so I'm going to clip my thread. All right, and we'll go back over. 
All right, so we're going to bring this back over here. So this is the one that I did on the baby lock, and then this is the one that I just stitched on the Bernina. So you can see, let me turn this, and you can see the difference between the zigzag and the um, serpentine. So this is the serpentine on, and the zigzag on the Bernina. This is the serpentine and the zigzag on the baby lock. Okay, so you can see that they look a little bit different. Um, it'll really depend on what your machine does and which you prefer, and I really suggest that you give it a try. Like cut out a couple of squares, base them together like I did, and then sew some binding on them. Try a few different types, make your serpentine wider, narrower, longer, try a different zigzag. If you have a def another decorative stitch that you really love, you can do that. Um, I know there are people who do the blanket stitch, like a wider blanket stitch on the binding to hold that down, and that's totally an option too. Um, so just give it a try. Practice a few times, and then when you make your quilt or your blanket, you'll totally have it down and you'll have it just the way that you like to do it um, because it really is personal preference. Uh, like I said, I really prefer doing it with the Lux Cuddle. That's my favorite just because it hides my imperfections and uh, I don't have to be quite so meticulous when I'm stitching, which is great. And uh, all the fluff is super nice. So it really just depends on what you want. Um, join us next week. We'll be back and we're going to be working on a um, quilting with cotton and cuddle. So if you are a quilt maker and you love making quilts, I will tell you if you put cuddle on the back of your quilts, no one will ever put your quilt back in the closet. Um, it's the best thing for the back of a quilt. Um, yeah, everybody loves it and once you've done one, everybody's going to ask for it that way too. So I'm going to give you some tips on quilting with it and, um, and then once you do that, you'll know how to quilt it and you can bind your quilt so with the cuddle and it's great you're gonna love it it works beautifully for the cotton quilts as well too so um, join us next week we'll be back then I will have lots of tips on quilting with cuddle and then we have a couple of more weeks left before our little summer session is over I would love it if you would let us know what you want to know um, so if there's something else that you've been questioning and you've been wanting to know how do I do this um, go ahead and leave a comment and let us know and we'll see if we can add it in there because I would love to be able to make sure that we've answered all of your big questions. We're going to continue doing some video tutorials, and um, I want to make sure that we get them all. So let me know what you want, and uh, join us next week. We'll be back doing Cotton and Cuddle. Thanks. Bye-bye.